I'm going to tell you my story about cardiology over the last 40 years. I learnt in the United Kingdom how to do pictures of the coronary arteries by injecting into the aorta. This told us when coronary arteries were blocked. From this, it led to my concept of a heart attack. I had learnt that uh, people with heart attacks when they were admitted to hospital had a mortality in the region of 30%. If their heart rhythm was monitored, we could reduce that mortality from 30% to something less than 20%. The Heart Foundation and Ralph Reader were particularly interested in the work that we were doing, and I was lucky enough to get with Dr. Jim Robinson a research grant from the Heart Foundation to study the whole concept of coronary care units. From monitoring patients in our embryonic coronary care units, we learnt quite quickly that people who died from heart attacks either died from heart failure with the rhythm undisturbed or else they had ventricular fibrillation which had to be treated by defibrillation with electrical devices or they had ventricular standstill which could only be treated by a pacemaker. Originally, the pacemakers that we used were external, but we then were able to use internal implanted pacemakers with their electrode wires attached to the heart, either after a heart operation with the chest being open, or later on in the mid-1960s, we learned how to put a pacing catheter in through a great vein and insert this into the right ventricle and then implant the pacemaker generator either under the skin of the abdomen or the upper chest. We found it uh, very helpful to follow the patients after implantation of their pacemakers and we established in 1963 the first pacemaker clinic in Australia. The Heart Foundation of Australia helped us in keeping a record of the patients who had implanted pacemakers at this time. The the idea of recording in registers the effect both of admission to coronary care units and pacemaker implantation was quite novel, although very uh, natural and sensible at that time. The MICA units were established to treat with people who had been resuscitated out of hospital and it was necessary then to train the ambulance officers we also became aware that you had to train members of a community how to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation and also people in the hospital had to be trained better. Often in the emergency ambulance it was not clear of the patient's electrical status and what heart rhythm they were in. We developed the method of having a telephone transmission of the electrocardiogram from the patient in the emergency ambulance transmitted to the coronary care unit. We also used the same technique, recording the electrocardiogram and transmitting it over the telephone to a cardiologist's home when a problem with the heart rhythm occurred at night. So for 40 years, my story has been learning about the heart, helping in the development with other people, the techniques used in improving the treatment, and at the end, I can look back and feel very grateful both to my colleagues and to the Heart Foundation for the support that I've received over the years.